What's up? I'm Aiden Kazar, the director of podcast for Wax News, and this is an outsider perspective on Oregon. You might have seen me zooming around the hallways in my chair, or you might know me as the short kid in your gym class, but you don't know me. I was born on December 1st, 2003 in Buffalo, New York. I have dwarfism. That's what makes me so short. It is a condition that affects me physically but not mentally. Hospitals and surgeries were all my life when I was younger. I used to have a trach, a tube in my neck that I needed to breathe through, and a tube in my stomach that I was fed through because I couldn't eat breathe on my own. I had a hole in the roof of my mouth that they fixed when I was two. My heart stopped and I used to turn blue all the time and my parents would have to bag me until my airway opened back up. When I was four and a half, I went to Cincinnati to get my check removed. I was in surgery for over eight hours. They took my rib cartilage, put it into my airway, and when I was done, I could breathe on my own. On top of all of that, I had moderate to severe hearing loss. I started losing my hearing at age six, when I was 12, I had my first bone-related surgery. I had both of my hips done. They literally cut my femurs completely in half and put them back together with screws and rods. I couldn't walk for two months, and I had to do aqua therapy or physical therapy. And that was my last major surgery. I had minor surgeries uh, since, and being put to sleep is a weird feeling. First, your vision goes out, then your hearing echoes, and your body starts feeling tingly. Then you wake up when it's all over. I used to be scared of this when I was younger. This is the crappy part of my dwarfism. Growing up in Buffalo. I grew up on the south side of Buffalo. I lived in a duplex with my mom, dad, my sister, my grandma, and my grandpa. My old house was in my family for over 70 years. When I was younger, it wasn't too bad. I grew up in a decent neighborhood, but we were only allowed to play on our street, not around the block. Over time, it got worse, but that's just what I was used to. I didn't know any different. My old school was horrible. It was an art school, and I was a theater major. Middle school wasn't that bad. I was in a lot of musicals, but high school was a different story. Freshman year was awful. Friends that I've known for a while drifted apart and nobody wanted to hang out and it was just not a great time. Then sophomore year is when the pandemic hit and I didn't really have a junior year. Okay. During the pandemic, my parents were looking for a house. Our neighborhood in Buffalo got worse and worse. We couldn't even go down our street to hang out anymore. Shootings, stabbings, fights, drive-bys were just normal and it wouldn't even be on the news. That's how normal it was. There's even a known friendly neighborhood crackhead. People that go through your garbage for cans and bottles. People constantly ask you for money. They even stand in the middle of the street and dance. It took a year, but we finally found a house in Auburn. The house had good bones, roof, those kind of things. But we put a, but we put in new floors, repainted the whole interior, and redid one of the bathrooms. I finally had a small sink that I could just walk up to. No more step stools. We did all of that in a month and. I couldn't wait to get out of Buffalo. Thinking back, it flew by, but while we were doing it, it felt like moving was endless. My first impression of Oregon was that people were way friendlier and nicer than people in the city. For example, if I looked at a stranger in the city, they would think that I, that you would have a problem with them. But in Oregon, it's a wave, a smile, and they say hello to you. They seem like they like their life. They seem like they're happy. People in the city always seem miserable. During the spring, was time to get used to the house. To be honest, I thought I was going to miss my old house and my old neighborhood, but I didn't. The only thing I missed were my grandparents, and they still lived in Buffalo. My grandfather was sitting outside our house in Buffalo, and there was a shootout. Twenty-something shots fired just feet away from him. Thankfully, after that, they got out the city and moved to Oregon as well. Summer was just okay mostly because I had to go to summer school all the way back in my in into the city at my old school and I didn't know anybody in Auburn to hang out with. The trees, the fields, the silos, the barns, the flowers, the sky, the smell, everything is just so much nicer out here. 
You don't know how ugly the city is until you get out of it. I never knew the sky could be so clear, the air could smell so clean, how green the grass could be until I moved to Oregon. Going back and forth to summer school from Oregon to Buffalo really made me see how ugly and dirty the city really is. I never saw that ugly before. I was very anxious about starting a new school, but at the same time I couldn't wait because I've been wanting to meet new people. I went to the senior sunrise on the first day of school. There was what felt like a lot of people there in the parking lot. At first, I didn't know who to approach, so I just stood by myself. The assistant principal saw me and said hi to me. Then he yelled to call everyone in the parking lot over to me and introduce me to everyone. At that moment, my heart sank with embarrassment. All eyes were on me. But I'm glad that he did that because I don't know how long it would have taken myself to approach someone. Everyone was super friendly. They all welcomed me with open arms, and they even offered me breakfast. I've only been going to Auburn for a month, and I've already found some really solid people. And as the new kid, this, that's the best thing that I can ask for. Stop now. Keep your hands up, get them in the sky for the homies that ain't making them. My folks locked down.